Hello jugglers and welcome to this comprehensive 360s tutorial where I'm going to break down the 360 into its basic elements to show you how to do one properly. Before we start, I'd like to direct your attention to the video description box where there will be a chapter selection tool that you can use to click and jump between different sections of the video if you choose to come back to this video for future reference. In this video, we will look at the mechanics of the spin, integrating juggling into these 360s, spotting, and which direction to spin. Now, let's get started. One of the first things to take into consideration before starting 360s is which shoe to use. It's important to choose a durable shoe that has a flat sole to allow you to spin with ease and handle the wear that 360s will take on your shoe. It is possible to do 360s in socks, and some people do, however, I don't recommend it. Let's take a look at the mechanics of the spin. I will be describing a left spinning or counterclockwise spin. For those of you spinning the other way, each of my directionally cueing words will be opposite. Let's break this down into three components. Foot movement, staying tight, and the whip. While juggling, you'll begin the transition into the 360 by taking a small step back with your left foot in a slightly open stance. Then, you'll move your right foot slightly forward with your toe pointing to the left to get into a position that still allows you to juggle, yet enables you to generate the speed during the 360. After the high 360 throws, you'll release your energy, spin about your back foot, and use your right foot to assist in stopping the rotation. Let's take a look at this from the front. With practice, the precision of your 360s will increase, which will prevent over and under rotation. The second key is to stay tight. The goal here is to keep our arms as close to our body as possible while also remaining in a position that allows us to transition out of the spin and back into the juggling pattern. If we held our arms away from our body, we can see how much more difficult it would be to spin. Right before your rotation, pull your arms into your body quickly and use your core to generate power. Figure skaters, skiers, snowboarders, and others use this same philosophy to generate rotational speed. The final mechanic is what I like to call the whip. This term describes how the lower body gets out in front of the rotation. Watch how after my 360 throws, my hips begin to fire and my waist gets almost 90 degrees ahead of my eyes, which are still watching the pattern. Then, I whip my body around and get my left arm in a position to catch the first ball. Don't get carried away focusing on this element right away. I've found that this technique will naturally develop over time, but I do think it is worth covering. Now let's move on to the second section, integrating spins into your juggling. If there's one thing you take away from this whole video, it should be this. 360s are comprised of three separate and distinct events, which should never be combined. They are the setup throws, the 360, and the entry to the pattern. One must throw the setup throws while not spinning. To this point, you are only a juggler. Next, conduct the spin. During this middle section, you are not juggling, and you may as well not even be a juggler. Do your spin as quickly and accurately as possible, and then stop spinning. Finally, you quit being a 360-er, and you are now a juggler again. You may complete the trick and resume juggling. I cannot stress enough how important it is to separate these three events. This is by far the biggest mistake made while learning 360s, and here is what it might look like if you don't follow this advice. Now I know what you're thinking, but Phil, how on earth can I spin quickly if I have to follow your advice? And besides, it looks like you start spinning while you're throwing the last ball. Here's the thing. While I'm not an expert, I have been doing 360s for a while, and I have done thousands upon thousands of them and become efficient at stringing the setup throws, the 360, and the entry very, very close to one another, as have many other great 360 jugglers. One's efficiency and proficiency will grow with this movement over time, but believe me, every good juggler still follows this principle in that they do not let 360 affect the quality of the juggling that takes place before or after the 360. After practicing 360s without juggling, begin to integrate it into your juggling by doing some 3-ball 1-up 360s. Build it up by increasing the speed of your spin and start doing 2-up and 3-up 360s. 
While you are practicing, it is important to never compromise form. If you have to, throw your props higher in order to give yourself the time that is necessary to spin correctly. It may also be helpful to film yourself while practicing. That way, you can see the mistakes that you're making and correct them. Now, let's move on and take a closer examination at spotting. Spotting is a method used in which a juggler looks at the first ball to be caught after the 360 before he or she starts the spin. As your spin gets more consistent and the 360 tricks get more complex, the importance of spotting increases. It is hard to see on video, but each time, before I spin, I spot the ball that lands first so I know exactly where I have to have my hand at the completion of the spin. I keep my eyes on the prop as long as I can until I have to whip my head around for the spin. To this point, this tutorial has covered only spin technique. Before learning these things, it may be wise to consider which hand to start the set of throws or which direction to learn the spin if you don't already have a preference. Personally, I start my set of throws with my right hand when I do 360s with both even and odd numbers. For even numbers, this is ideal, but with odd numbers, I have to spin all the way around to catch that first crossing throw with my left hand. If I were to do it all over again, I would have learned to start odd number setup throws with my left hand. Look online for other jugglers and watch closely to see which method they use. That concludes this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. By using the fundamentals, you'll be able to integrate 360s into a variety of tricks, including sight swap connections, synchronous patterns, clubs, rings, and more. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and thanks for watching.